Hey guys, check out what I just uh, acquired. A friend of mine uh, came over and we did a little bit of trading. I gave him a couple of radios and he gave me an antenna analyzer. I finally have an antenna analyzer after building all these antennas. <laughs> I have played with this a little bit. I hooked it up to my two element Yagi that I built. And I was very pleased to see 1.1 SWR and 47 ohms of resistance. Uh, that was across pretty much the entire CB band. Uh, my beam was capable of going down to 26 megahertz and keeping below 1.5 SWR and up to 28.6 and still having uh, 1.5 or less SWR. But I have another thing that I want to use this on. I went to the Shelby Ham Fest this weekend, and while I was there, a gentleman at one of the tables gave me all three of these bases. I did not have any of the whips for them. I have pieces and parts of antennas around. So let's see if we can get any of these to work. What I'm going to do is just a, a good enough, I'm going to put them on the hood of my wife's tractor. <laughs> it's in the middle of the garage, well, in the middle towards the door, but uh, I've tested antennas here before, and the SWR will be a little bit higher than what it would be outside. So let's see if I can dig out some whips and a spring for that one. And see what happens. See if we can get any of these free bases to actually work. The undersides are in, still in good shape. They're still sealed. And, oh, does that one have a hole? Oh, it does have a little hole in it. Oh, we're probably going to have to peel that one to make sure it's good inside. I think this one also had a hole in it. Yeah, that one has a hole in it too. Outside of the magnet. It's actually a little magnet for that big base. And this one, I think, is in great shape. Yeah, that one's in fantastic shape. Well, it's got some wrinkling, but no tears. All right, let's see if we can put some whips on these and make any of them work. So I pulled out a few of the parts that I have around. And I have the first base on the hood of the tractor. So let's try a few of those whips in that and see what it does. So I put in a whip. Let's see what happens at that one. All right, let's turn it on. What frequency is it at? Oh, look at that. It's just above channel 9. Oh, and look at the SWR. Oh, the resistance, too. It's getting worse as I go up. Oh, boy. Well, look at that. It's tuning <laughs> around. What's the lowest SWR we can get? 1.3. Wow, look at that. 1.3 and 50 ohm resistance. But at 25.16. So that antenna is way too long. Way too long. All right, I'm going to go put a shorter whip on that, and we'll try it again. So I just took this whip off of there and put that one on. That one is probably about 10 or 11 inches shorter. All right, let's check it again. I'm going to have to switch this. The SWR changed quite a bit. We're still at the same frequency area, but look how far off it is now. Let's put that back on the CB band. Scroll way down here. Let's see if we can find the sweet spot. See if we got any closer. Oh, we're getting there. Well, now it's a 10 meter antenna. <laughs> well, look at that. At least we know if I put this whip on there, it'll work on 12 meter. And with the whip that's on there now, it'll work on 10 meter. All right, let me see if I can get 11 meter out of it. 
Well, I don't have a whip that's a little bit longer than that one. So, we're going to call that one a 10 meter antenna. <laughs> It'll work on 10 meter band. All right, let's move on to the next one. Let's try this Cobra next. Uh, this is the one I'm actually hoping works. All right, for that Cobra antenna, I think I'm just going to try this whole setup. This was working on a, another magnetic mount antenna, but the base had gone bad. It had cracks in it, and it was rusty inside. So I saved the whip in the spring. Let's try it on that Cobra, because that Cobra looks just like the one that this came off of. All right, I have the Cobra attached to the tractor, and I put that spring and whip on there. Let's go check it out and see what it does. All right, here we go. What frequency is that thing going to be on? Oh, we're still up in the 10 meter. Let's... Well, look at that. Can you hear that? My Washington over there is on channel 38. This, this thing puts out a signal. When we get right near channel 38, it makes that noise. But look at the SWR and the resistance. That Cobra antenna is pretty good. Let's go right in the middle of the CB band. If we can get there close enough. Looks like about, what do you think, 1.3? 1.4 somewhere around there resistance is pretty good we're at 45 ohms that one's actually a pretty good antenna I'm pleased with that one that SWR remember we set up inside of a garage it said SWR will probably get even better on that antenna when it's outside that's fantastic that's the one I was hoping worked all right, we got that one. Let's move on to the last one. Let's see what we can do with that. I was just poking around with it, and I don't know what that has for thread. But none of my springs or antennas will thread onto that. And that is fixed in there. It's not coming out. So unfortunately, I don't have the top section for that one. Well, let's try this one anyway, because I did realize, it, don't be a mistake, I have that whole coil, that base load, that should screw right onto that base. So let me swap that out, and we'll test that out. Well, look at that. It actually did thread right on there. So let me go set this one on the tractor, and we'll try it out, see if it works. Okay, we have it mounted on the hood of the tractor. Now we're going to check it on the analyzer. <laughs> Way off of the CB, that's for sure. And it gets worse as we go up. We're getting there. No, that's not it either. Wow, look at that resistance drop right off. It looks like about the lowest we can get is on 25 megahertz, and we are getting a I don't know, 1.8, 1.9 on the SWR, and ooh, 80, 80 ohms of resistance. Oh boy, yeah, I don't think that base load is any good anymore. Unfortunately, that was the only base that I had. I mean, I mean the only uh, coil, base load coil that I had that would work on that magnet mount. But that coil must have some damage inside. It probably has corrosion in it. It's a, that's an old one. That's from the 70s. Well, I had fun playing with the new analyzer. 
And I got a great CB antenna right there. Cobra, white Cobra. Got a good 10 meter antenna right there. And unfortunately, that one I just don't have any parts. So that one's going to go into the parts pile. And who knows, maybe that base will work in the future for another whip and coil that I find. Whenever I find the bases and the coils and stuff at yard sales, flea markets, I grab them. Because you never know. Look, we ended up with a nice CB antenna out of stuff that I had kicking around. And a 10 meter antenna too. I don't use 10 meter, but you never know. Alright guys, I thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you next time. Well, I told you about the, the two element Yagi, but I figured I would show you. You can see we're on uh, almost channel 38. It's just a smidge above 38. Check out the SWR. 1.1. Now look at the resistance. Let me show you. Let's see if I can get this so I'm not getting any glares here, reflections. Let me... Uh, Turn this thing down. Now let's go all the way down at 26. At 26, the SWR, wow, we really can't get rid of that glare. The SWR is about 1.5, and the resistance is still good. Now let's go up. The SWR should start to climb. There it goes. We'll go until it hits 1.5. 1.5. Our resistance is still good. And ooh, we're all the way up to 28.8. <laughs> I'd say that's a pretty broad banded antenna. Let's go back down one more time. And there it goes. The SWR will start to increase. Let's go until it hits 1.5, and we're at 26 megahertz. I'm really happy with that antenna. That's my two-element Yagi.